Hey everybody, Mike Portnoy here, coming to you from the Winery Dogs US tour. We're here in New York City. This is my lovely Winery Dogs kit. I'm here to talk about some of my favorite drum intros through rock and metal history. Some of my favorite drummers, and then a few of my own as well. When I first started playing drums when I was a kid, I had three big heroes. It was, uh, first it was Ringo Starr, then it was Keith Moon, and then I discovered John Bonham. And uh, as much as I love all three drummers, I mean, Ringo was such a great straight drummer and played for the band and played for the songs. Keith was such a animated drummer. I mean, I just was so inspired by how crazy he was on stage and his drumming was just so chaotic. But it was Bonzo that had all these classic drum intros. In fact, you know, you know a bunch of them, but there's such a long list of them. So it was, uh, let's see, it was like, well, you had, uh, it's the very first thing you heard was good times, bad times. Here. So that was the very first drum thing you heard from the very first Zeppelin album, but then the list goes on and on and on. You had rock and roll. You had uh, the crunch. which is also De La Soul, Three is a Magic Number. Uh, and then you had, uh, speaking of uh, rappers sampling John Bonham, the very, very uh, opening to the first Beastie Boys album starts with John Bonham's drums. Um, it's, of course, when the levee breaks, but it starts with a... And you have The Rover. So the point is, John Bonham was like my first drum hero that had all of these cool, cool drum intros. The groove on uh, Fool in the Rain, which is a kind of a cool swing thing. So he was the man, he was the, the groove master. Then I discovered more progressive music and Neil Peart was my guy. I mean, he was my hero. Through all my teenage years, I became the biggest Rush fanatic, learning all of Neil's parts. And like John Bonham, Neil had all these legendary drum parts. The intro to Lakeside Park. Um, of course, the big fill at the beginning of the 2112 uh, Temples of Syrinx is a, a classic. Of course you know this one. And then the, the drum fills in the middle, of course. And the big one. So it was all those really cool Neil Peart isms that I cut my teeth on. That's how I learned how to play a big drum kit, play progressive music, play odd time signatures. And for so many years, Neil was my biggest drum hero. Iron Maiden's drummers, Clyde Burr and Nico McBrain, also were drummers that had classic, classic drum intros. Of course, some of the famous Clyde Burr ones. And of course you have the prisoner. Some really cool stuff on uh, the earlier albums. So Clive was this drummer that had these really cool drum parts, but then 
they got the new guy in 1983, and you drop the needle on peace of mind, and this is the first thing you hear. Then came the world of metal, and uh, around the early to mid 80s, when the whole thrash scene was coming out, I got really into all those early Metallica albums, Slayer, Anthrax, Megadeth, Overkill, Flotsam and Jetsam, Exodus, that whole scene was a huge, huge influence on me, and there were a lot of great drummers that had uh, some incredible drum parts. Of course, uh, let's see, we could do Whiplash, like. Charlie Benante was a huge influence. I was a big, big SOD fan. I mean, Speak English or Die was like the first time you ever heard Blast Beats, and that album was a huge influence. But even from the very, very first uh, Fistful of Metal album. And then, of course, you have Dave Lombardo. And then, of course, the middle of uh, Rain and Blood is, was legendary. In fact, I got to do uh, a version of Rain and Blood with Metal Masters, and it was three drummers, myself, Charlie Benante, and Dave Lombardo. We also had uh, Kerry King and Phil Anselmo and Frank Bello and Dave Ellison. It was, it was awesome. But we did Angel of Death, and when it got to that classic double bass thing that I'm going to play for in a second, we actually did it with all three of us. Like, first Dave went, and he kept going, then Charlie went, he kept going, then I came in, and we had all three of us doing this at the same time. And a few other guys around that same time, maybe a few years later, I was really into Mickey D, King Diamond. Uh, Welcome Home, of course, is a classic intro. Classic, classic drumming on those King Diamond albums. One of the most iconic drum intros is uh, uh, from a band that I ended up playing with uh, for their final couple tours. And uh, so I got to play this classic, famous drum intro every night. And it's one of those things, the minute you hear it, you know exactly what the hell it is. And it was uh, AJ Pirro, of course, Twisted Sister. We're not going to take I've written a few of my own kind of drum intros through the years as well. I think the most famous one, uh, or at least the earliest one, would be Six O'Clock from uh, Dream Theater's Awake. Kind of a classic drum intro I had with Dream Theater was the beginning of Honor Thy Father from Train of Thought. <laughs> Similar to the Honor Thy Father drum intro, um, when I did Avenged Sevenfold's uh, Nightmare album, they had a song called Welcome to the Family, and the demo just had the rev just doing. It was just started with just a flammed snare hit, and then the song started. So when we were doing the album, those guys asked if I could come up with some kind of intro, uh, you know, something a little more exciting than just 
kicking it off with the snare drum. It's similar to the kind of patterns I use in Honor Thy Father. In keeping with the tradition of classic drum intros, the new Winery Dogs album uh, has a song called Gaslight. And even though it's not a, a drum uh, intro by itself, it was a pattern that, uh, that I wrote and then those guys wrote a, a riff to it. We knew we wanted to come out of the gates with that song, swinging with some crazy you know, unison line. So uh, when we were in the studio, those guys were like, well, just play something and then we'll you know, write something to it later. So it ended up being this. Winery Dogs album three is out now, and we're on tour all throughout America in February, March, and April, and May. So come on out and see us.